NY Clout, shout out to Nomad, Omori, Boy Mozzie. I'm here. About to hit MTV. We're here with the homie Sway. Yeah, yeah. Your boy Mozzie. Let's go. So, we're here. This is a Tastemaker series. Okay. All and, right. um. What it takes to be a tastemaker, real quick? People I mean, say they throw that, that's an industry term. I mean, what is that exactly? What does that mean? Well, as they will find out briefly in this interview, you have to have a uh, knowledgeable sense of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? You can't just, you can't just be wet behind the ears and say you're a tastemaker. Okay, cool. So, you know. Um, and also, it's called tastemakers because we always present a food or drink or something that the, the person that I'm interviewing likes to eat or drink. Okay. And in your case earlier, you told me it was oatmeal. Oatmeal. I like to start my day off with oatmeal every single day. Mm -hmm. It's good for the digestive tract. Um, it's healthy. It gives you a lot of energy, a lot of nutrients. I like to cut fruit up in it, like uh, bananas. Slice the bananas, make it dice them into chunks. Put a little cinnamon on the top of it. Uh, throw some raisins in there. A lot of people know you from MTV. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew you years before that. And can you just give a brief history, just go back a little bit, you know, go in a time machine for us a little bit. I came in the game, Tech and I, my partner King Tech, um, I'm from Oakland, he was from um, Hayward at the time, decided to form a rap group because breakdancing had kind of became something that he couldn't really make a living off of. We was coming out of school in high school when we started the group and we just saw a future in the music, and we both loved the music, so I started writing and into the couple battles, and he into the couple DJ battles, and um, those battles led to us, you know, investing in our own music, putting our records independently in Northern California through my mother's house, uh, out of my bedroom. <clears throat> Couldn't get a major deal, kept putting our music independently, produced a few artists um, locally. Um, eventually, we did get a major record deal with Warner Brothers, and then we also got hired on a station called KMEO Radio just to do a mix show, Tech won a DJ contest, so they gave us some time to do so. We turned the mix show into a variety show. We were still basically high school kids. Um, we learned a lot through that process. I learned everything I needed to know about the business. I decided to forfeit my mic and then put my energy into running our business, and uh, as well as expanding the Wake Up Show, which was at that time on KMEL in San Francisco. I started working on getting us to syndication. Tech and I wanted to expand the show. We got to LA, then we got to Chicago, then Philly, then it just started growing. Uh, later on, we started doing concert tours. We teamed up with Gorilla Union. This was before Rock the Bells. We used to do Wake Up Show 101 concerts. The same thing that evolved into Rock the Bells, pretty much. You know, we contributed to a lot of artist success early on, from the Nazis to the um, you know, Tribe Called Quest <coughs> to the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, Jay-Z, Biggie, you know, um, Pac, you know, we did Pac and Biggie's last interviews before they passed. You know, we got a lot of history under our belt, being immersed in the culture and helped, you know, contribute to Eminem's success and exposure. He eventually got a deal. Because of that, we got a deal too. Uh, Jimmy Iovine gave us a, Tom Wiley gave us a production deal. We put out a Wake Up Show album called um, This or That. I remember the, that. You remember the album? Mm -hmm. Featured a song called The Anthem that had Eminem and has the whole world on it. Everybody was on that. RZA, Fuji um, Rap, Chino Excel, Tech Nine, uh, Jail Felony, Karis One, all the, Red Alert was in it. I mean, it was a, it was a great, and still is a great classic video. And uh, so we had all these things going for years. And then I was approached by MTV to come work with them. I've had a chance to open doors here at MTV and find a way to be a liaison to make these people who normally um, at that time wouldn't be on MTV have an appropriate place at MTV. So it's been um, it's been a great run. Yeah, King Tech and I are working with these partners on an um, art venture called WhenArtImitatesLife.com. WhenArtImitatesLife.com is a priority to us. It's um it's a platform that and we work with these two guys um, that um gives us the ability to find, you know, pick out our, some of our favorite artists, like RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan, uh, Qbert from, you know, the Bay, the Scratch Pickles, and you know, that, that clan, and um, the hieroglyphics, Shabo from System of a Down, we sit down with them and ask them, if you had a vision or concept of 
what your music or who you feel you are through your music and what it represents that's not not necessarily about music, what would it be? For me, man, I, you know, Mozzie, it's good to just be in this chair, able to watch it, but also create platforms that enable people to do it. You know, it's all a blessing. I resonated well with the audience, and, um, and I just tried to make sure I maintain a certain level of truth when it came to hip-hop culture. Not because I wanted to be in the business of hip-hop, I was already there. I'm, I've, I've never been a customer, I've been a contributor.